and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In today's Gospel reading, we see, to begin with, that Jesus heard that John had been put in prison. Shortly after Jesus' baptism, John was put in prison. And we know what the final outcome of that was. And so, the time of John had come to a close. John was taken out of the way so that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, would be there and be able to begin his ministry and begin his teaching of the people. And therefore, John, he would supersede John, and John would be removed, and there would be the Lord who would have all authority. This was done, God's will, providentially, so that there would not be a conflict between Jesus Christ and John. Because as you know, human nature is, some people will say, well, this is what John did, and this is what John does, and I'm going to follow John. I'm not going to follow you, Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of John's teaching. And in fact, John told the people that he was not worthy even to strap the sandals of Christ's feet, and that they should look to him, and they should follow him. So there is that providential interception there, so that John does not become a stumbling block to those who would, might otherwise follow Jesus Christ. A very important point for us as Christians, especially Orthodox Christians, to understand. And the last verse of the scripture reading this morning from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He began going through the entire countryside preaching that the kingdom of heaven was here and that we should repent and that we should prepare for the kingdom of heaven. He was beginning his earthly ministry as an adult. And this, of course, was after he had been baptized, after he fulfilled the law and the requirements of the law, and the commandments of God under the old Mosaic law. But he was the fulfillment of the law, and he was the new covenant, and he began to preach a new message to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I also want to talk briefly about Paul's letter to the Ephesians this morning. And he mentions that there are gifts that even as God gave his Son as a gift to us, incarnate in the flesh at nativity, so too God gives everyone gifts. And those Christians who receive gifts from God are to use them for the benefit of God and His Holy Church. And he lists some of the things, he's teachers and preachers and evangelists and so forth, but always giving the glory to God. In their work, they're to do their work for God, and always to give Him the glory. But you know, it's not limited to just preachers and teachers and evangelists in the church. God gives all of us gifts, and He gives all of us talents. And we should ask ourselves, do I use my talent to somehow and in some way glorify God? Or do I use my talent solely to support myself, my family, and to make my society better, my life better, those around me better? Or in some way am I able to take my talent and to glorify God? That's an important question. Because there is something that we can do with every single talent that God gives us to glorify Him. If we have talent in music, we can take it and glorify God. If we have talent in teaching, we can take it and teach the scriptures and teach classes on the church and glorify God. If we have talents in the financial area, we can help the church. Help the church both from a practical standpoint in giving them good advice and helping in any way we can, helping to raise money, doing all of those financial things 
and record keeping things for the church and for the glory of God. In that way, those people can use their talents. The people that are good orators can speak on behalf of God and on the church. Those people who are good pe people with their hands and can make things, craftsmen, construction workers, build things for the glory of God, and women with craftsmakers, sewing and that sort of thing can make things for the glory of God that can be used in the church and be used in the community to be given to others as an example of our almsgiving and glory to God. There's always something that we can do, a talent that we have that we can glorify God with. And it's important for us to ask Him what we can do with those talents that He has given to us. That is a great gift that we can give back to Him, especially in this period of nativity we have just finished. At the Theophany, the 12 days of Christmas between nativity and Theophany, and we have just finished Theophany, and so it's a perfect time to take that message and go out and use the gifts of God that He's given us to His glory. This is in one way that we can also do what Christ did in the last verse of the scripture reading today. He began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If we use our gifts to go out and to help the church and to help others, it is saying to them, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the kingdom of heaven. We believe that you should repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it's a great witness to them. It's a great evangelical tool to use to them. And if we do that, and if we pray for God's guidance and His strength and His grace, He will give it to us and He will help us and He will bless us. And we will have been able to give back to Him part of the gifts that He gave us in His great and infinite wisdom and His goodness to all of us. May God help us do this all. Amen. Amen.